Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my corner of the internet once again. My name is Jason, and today we're back with some more Distant Worlds Universe. Uh, while my guys were back in our home system, uh, you know, retrofitting and getting repaired and refueled, and hopefully getting ready to go ahead and uh, tackle that planet once again, uh, we ran across this little, this, this pirate construction ship who just thought it would be a great idea to start setting up shop in our home system. Uh, obviously our fleet did not feel the same way, and we are giving him a, a nice hearty welcome. Yeah, screw you pirates. <laughs> All right, so uh, basically where we left off is uh, exactly where we left off last time. Our, uh, tr our transport ships are still without fuel, and where are they at right now? Okay, th so they're, they're about to dock at the Sapphire Palace and get themselves all fueled up and ready to go. Uh, and we're going to take another shot at, uh, what was it called? Tika 3, I believe was the name of the planet. Now we're going to... Uh, this time here, I'm gonna maybe not hit automate right away, as uh, so that way they, they will maybe maybe they'll just obey me straight up and just fly all the way there and take it. Uh, especially, let me see, wh how close are we? 62% on accelerated construction. So uh, yeah, we probably will not have uh, resupply ships ready in time, but eh, it'll um, it will happen <laughs> eventually. It will happen, but uh, we definitely need to expand. Looking at our uh, say the uh, empire comparison, if we look at territory. We see now that there, um, there is at least two other uh, factions, or let's say, sorry, three, three factions that have uh, already expanded out a little bit, and that will give them a huge advantage. Especially these guys here, the Dendalus Technocracy, have a total of 19 colonies. We only see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, seven systems. They might have multiple, um, we'll say, colonies in each system. Yeah, example. This one right here has two uh, ocean and marsh planets. Uh, let's see, our construction ship is under attack from a pirate escort. I'm not afraid this guy is going to, he, he's going to escape. Yeah, not, not, not afraid of losing that guy there. Uh, it's, it, and it's all, it's all over, we'll say, by our outer rim. So, uh, basically, that is basically the game plan. We're going to go ahead and refuel our uh, troop transports, and we're going to take another shot at Tika 3, because, uh, yeah, we need to expand. Now, uh, I, if you'll remember back in episode zero, if you watched it, uh, I said I set up uh, the game to have a limit on how far out you could colonize, uh, and that limit was set to two sectors. So let's say my planet right is right here. We'll say about two sectors. Uh, we'll say size away or radius around, right about here, I'd say, is about the limit to, to where I can actually colonize. Now the thing is, this planet is already colonized by an independent uh, independent faction. So it does not fall under the rule of where I can colonize. Those colonization range rules are only apply to, uh, you know, what you're going to be sending your colony ships to. I don't know exactly, I, I know for, uh, in game, uh, like for game reasons, it's for balance, but I'm trying to think of exactly why within, we'll say, this universe, uh, that system is there. I'm wondering, uh, maybe it has something to do with logistics and being able to govern, uh, areas that are far outside a certain reach, uh, but regardless, that is, uh, that, that, that's that. So we, we don't have to worry about that, that range limit when we're capturing independent colonies. Like I said, it only applies when we're actually trying to, uh, colonize things, uh, ourselves. Alright, check this action out. Our Agent Solid Snake has evaded detection after successfully stolen research information on continental colonization. And as a result, we actually have continental colonization. Good job, Snake! Alright, we're gonna actually tell Snake to, um, who's actually, I can't tell if his espionage went up again. Regardless, 65%, no, actually, I think that's what it was before. Uh, regardless, we're gonna tell him to get out there and start stealing some more research. Not from the Rhodian Hive, because they've got nothing else for us. But the Dandalus Technocracy, we want some more research. How about... Hmm, we could go shield reinforcements, point defense weapons. Actually, point defense weapons would be good. Marshy Swamp Colonization, I think we're gonna go for that one. 88% success. Ah. Uh, is that any, let me see, point defense, is that easier? No, it's not, so we might as well go for the big, the big tech, the big techs. So we're gonna uh, send him off to try to s steal marshy swamp colonization and hope he does not fail because losing him would be a major blow to us. So we're gonna send him off once again to, uh, to, to, to do that. Uh, right now our troop transports are uh, retrofitting because we did get, if I recall correctly, we got enhanced storage last time. Did we get enhanced storage? 
I think we did last time. I can't remember. Um, but that should improve, we'll say, the range on our ships. So hopefully, hopefully, we'll be able to reach Tika 3. But we now have a new option at our disposal. If there are any continental planets nearby, we can go ahead and colonize them. So let's go under the expansion planner and see if there are any. I doubt there are, but... So potential colonies. We see here uh, Tika 3, which is one we're going for. We have a continental moon, which is way over here. We can't colonize that. It's too far away. Actually, yeah, let's, let's start by distance. Uh, so we have this one here. Is Isyant. And it's a desert moon. A colonization unlikely due to hostile population. Yeah, the I don't I don't I don't see any candidates for uh, colonization really. It's basically they're all independent factions that we're going to have to overthrow. That is basically what it boils down to. Ah, such a pity. Alright, I really want special forces, so I think we're gonna go ahead and initiate a crash program for Battlefield Sabotage. It's gonna cost us, um, oh, I actually I accidentally double-clicked, uh, but if I recall correctly, it was about 240,000. Uh, let's see, we're at 271,000, that's about to drop, yeah. So that's, that's about right. Uh, so we initiated a crash project, so we should be able to get special forces uh, sometime in the near future. I'm not sure if we will, we will have it in time for, um... Maybe I should hold off on my attack on Tika, but uh, the longer I hold off the more we fall behind and With say with 173 strength. Let me see. What was their? We don't know what their the troop uh, The troop composition is now they, they may have been getting even stronger since we were last there All right, so I, I need to I need to do some thinking do I want to wait a little bit longer and get the the, the, the bonus from having special forces or do I really need to just get out there and capture that planet it's gonna definitely take a little bit of thinking here. Okay, it seems to have slipped my mind that we had a, we had the ability to build armored factories on the blue planet, and what that will do. Actually, I'll go ahead and bring up the uh, appropriate tech screen for that. Uh, if I recall correctly, that allows us to uh, use uh, build basically armored units. Uh, let me see, armored ground assault. So it gives us uh, the enabled recruiting of armored forces provides very strong attack for invading enemy colonies. Armored forces must be produced at an armored factory planetary facility built at one of your colonies. Armored forces are twice the size of infantry and thus require more space on your troop transports. Yes, but they they uh, they, def they definitely have a lot more force. It's basically like bringing tanks and mechs and stuff down to the surface. Um, although I believe the icon just represents tanks. I'd like to imagine that there are actually some mechs mixed in there because mechs are cool. So we're gonna go ahead and build that on the blue planet. It. Um, maybe, yeah, we won't get, we'll say, special forces in time, but we can definitely, we'll say, leverage our uh, armored units, and uh, we'll build some of those, toss those on there, and then that should really help us, uh, we'll say, swing things in our favor. All right, now these guys want to go ahead and uh, start a free trade agreement with us, so I figured, you know what, why not? Let's let's have free trade with everyone! That sounds like a great idea! I don't know- oh yeah, they're all the way down here. I, d I don't know how much trade we'll exactly have with them, but um, it, it's, it's, it's a nice thing. I'd rather be able to look at my empire screen and say, okay, we got greens, which means these guys here, we're, you know, we're, we're in pretty well with. Um, even though, you know, they, they might say annoyed with- they might be annoyed with us. Uh, it's still kind of beneficial, I guess. I don't know. I'll, I'll actually have to think about that a little bit more. Uh, we are definitely starting to fall behind, though, and that is, like I said, that is because we are limited by uh, our size. We we can't expand out because we just don't have anywhere to expand to. All right, we've completed construction of our new armored factory at the our colony, our only colony. Uh, so what that will allow us to do is to construct. Uh, armored attack force. So we're gonna build some of these to slap those uh, on our um, our troop transports, and that will, uh, like I said, that'll help. We'll say, give us an edge. Uh, I'm, I'm actually a little bit embarrassed that I missed that last time. Should I? We should have been taking advantage of that a lot sooner. Okay, uh, Galactic Newsnet. The Tekin Corporation has a de deadly plague which strikes at uh, what is it? Villa Bray Two. Villa Bray Two. Uh, so that would be uh, probably in this system right here, and uh, basically, where is where would that be? Is that actually maybe maybe I'm wrong? Oh, down here. Sorry. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's to totally different names. For, I, I, for some reason, I just looked at the first letter, and that being a Y, it kind of looked like a V when it zoomed out. But basically, there's a deadly plague on this planet. And uh, what that means is that basically, if we have any trade or anything happening uh, with this planet. 
we uh, we can get the uh, Dekara virus, and that can go ahead and spread throughout the um, we'll say throughout the different empires and stuff. So that that planet there is uh, we we definitely don't want to be uh, doing doing any trade or anything with them because you know we we, we want to lose our our population of our basically our only planet. Um, now it looks like. Okay, they recently raided, so they're, they're they're dealing with pirates down there. So this planet here is actually really in bad shape. Um, actually, so bad that I'm I'm wondering if uh, maybe an intelligence mission against them to cause them to, uh, to force them to rebel against uh, the Teak Corporation would be a good idea. And Salt Snake has come back after uh, completing yes, getting us the, all the information we need on marshy swamp colonization. Wow, okay. So good job, Snake. He got us both of these. Um Okay, so what we need to do at this point. Oh, this is this is this is uh, actually this is nice because there were uh, if I recall correctly a couple marshy planets that I wanted to go ahead and colonize. Okay, what we want to do is I want to grab maybe a couple of the other, these other things like uh, maybe enhanced uh, target tracking. That means our shots will hit a little bit more. Actually, enhanced transport might not be a bad idea either. Uh, but, you know what, let's go with long-range scanners. Let me see, what is this, um... Let's see, the basic proximity array. This is, uh, actually a lot. Pretty good, yeah. Hmm. I'll do the usual thinking and get back to you. Alright, uh, I settled on long-range scanners, and what that does is it's kind of like an early warning system. If I, uh, set up, we'll say, different bases with long-range scanners, if something is, say, warping in or, you know, hyper-jumping in to attack us, we will be able to know ahead of time, and it will allow our fleets to respond before the enemy even gets there. So it'll make our defensive fleets that much more effective, uh, by having long-range scanners set up within our empire. So, w basically, we'll know it, where we're being attacked, when we're being attacked, before we're actually attacked. So, I, I definitely want to get that. So, that was the first thing on my list. The second thing was target tracking. I want to be able to really hit. So, when we are in a space fight, I want my shots to be, to really count. Um, also, along that same note, I went ahead and I got enhanced countermeasures, which, from what I understand, will actually make it harder for the enemy to hit us. So, we, we went ahead with that as my third option. And then I filled things out with uh, enhanced transport. Basically provides uh, improvements to the troop compartment and passenger compartments so that we can transport more people. And then I went ahead and I uh, just decided to grab enhanced sensors and uh, advanced resource exploration. I'm not sure uh, how important resource exploration really is uh, is at this point. We've we've done a lot of exploration uh, our, our surrounding areas. We know where our resources are. So it's not really important, but it is a requirement for ship scanning, which is something I want, which allows us to scan enemy ba uh, bases and ships to see what their condition is, where they're damaged, uh, you know, what they've got on them. Uh, so, you know, if we want, need to adjust our strategy or for ship design, we can, you know, if we want to counter that, uh, it's nice to have ship scanning. It's, it's, it's very nice to be able to get that kind of intel on the enemy. So that's kind of makes this an, uh, a necessity, even though I don't really see it as us needing it uh, where we are in the game. Um, I, I could be wrong on that, uh, you know, they might have uh, uses as, as well. Uh, enhanced sensors, from what I understand, that means that there's a chance that we can also, um, we, 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 there's also a chance we'll be able to track uh, enemies when they try to uh, escape from us. Once again, that's a lower priority thing because we tend to use Hyper Deny and I don't want my guys jumping all over the galaxy hunting down other ships. But I figured I would finish finish up these this, this sort of tier uh, before we started moving on to, we'll say, the fourth tier of techs, uh, technologies, I'm, 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 I'm not sure exactly where I'm gonna go, so I'm actually gonna leave that one blank for now. So, uh, we've gone ahead and we've got, uh, that done. Uh, we do need to give Solid Snake another mission. Uh, his, yeah, his espionage is still at 65. That's alright, though. Let's see, what kind of, uh, do we want to steal tech? We could try to incite a rebellion. I think actually tech would be more beneficial to us because it, that, that puts us ahead and we can really crush anything, uh, if we have the right tech, but then again, if that colony is allowed to expand and, you know, it's, it's, it's infected with virus and it's been raided. The pirates are giving them a hard enough time as it is. Let's just steal some technology. Let's get some technology. So we're going to go ahead and steal research once again. And we're going to try to steal, um, I'm thinking large scale construction. Because if we can get larger ships, then that means we can pack more stuff on our ships and be a lot more, we'll say, deadly. Uh, and that's definitely what we we want. Uh, I, like I said, I cannot understate just how important it is to ha be able to get those larger ships. Those large, larger ship sizes are so important. So, uh, let's see, that... 
let's see. Oh yes, that's right. We can we can go ahead and see if there are any colonies that are worth taking now. So we do have a couple planets within our uh, territory or near near our territory. This one's a little bit outside, uh, Rodian Major One. Um, but this one here is probably our, our top priority. The uh, reason for that is its size is a, a 30k and it's got a quality of 82. It's and it's in our our circle. So this is definitely something we want. I definitely want this planet. It's actually got some decent uh, resources on it as well. So this one here has got a lot of potential. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, go for this one. Urelon 4. You are about to become uh, our next colony. Uh, you know, depending if uh, depending on how, how our Siege on Tika 3 goes. So build and send a colony ship. We're going to send out a colony ship to there. So we've got one um, one planet up here. Let's believe it's this one right here. So right in that star. Uh, there's a lot of pirates up in this area, of course, though. So, oh, there's a lot of pirates up in that area. So we might want to actually send some, uh, like a defense force over there to um, deal with those. Uh, deal with those pirates before our colony ship gets there. Hmm. Okay, so what I'm gonna, I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna have to, we'll say, uh, manage two different maneuvers at the same time. Uh, our strike force is currently on, on route to Tika 3. I'm actually gonna grab defense force, um, let's see, uh, the third defense force. Defense, I said that kind of weird, didn't I? Defense, yeah. Um, we're gonna go ahead to this planet, and we're gonna actually assign the third defense force to, uh, maybe patrol here. And then they should be able to take out any, uh, you know, any sort of things. <laughs> they should be able to take out uh, any pirates in the area. The Temple of Eternal Blackness. I actually have never seen this before. We have discovered the Temple of Eternal Blackness. Ancient ruins from a lost civilization at the desert planet uh, Caprender Prime 1 in the Caprender Prime system. From our orbital inspection, we detect that the ruins are nearly consumed by a vast sandbank. Should we investigate the ruins? Of course! Secret form of government revealed. In the ruins of the Temple of Eternal Blackness, we have found documents outlining a unique form of government, the Way of Darkness. Oh, this type of government can provide us with special benefits that are unavailable to other empires. The documents explain that the Way of Darkness is a cruel form of government that was followed by an evil empire that once dominated the galaxy thousands of years ago. What happened to this mighty empire is not stated. We can adopt this new type of government at any time from the Empire Summary Screen. Oh, this is cool! Okay, where, where was this located? Uh, this was way out over here. That is, okay. Um, hmm, I'm not sure, I'm, oh, I'm not sure. Okay, you know what I'm actually gonna do? I'm, something I have not done yet. I'm actually gonna just go ahead and save the game at this time because I need time to think. Uh, and if I screw, th if I, I, I don't, I don't know, I'm nervous. The way, okay, uh, I had mentioned this before that there are different forms of government that you can get and some of them you can go ahead and unlock. There's the way of, um, what is it, the, it's not called the way of light, is it? It's, it's basically the way of light, uh, just maybe, maybe if not in, uh, in name, it, that's, that's the general idea of it. Uh, but there's also the, uh, the way of darkness, which we've just, just, just discovered. So let's go ahead and see what kind of benefits we would get from the way of darkness. War weariness is way down, so we could wage wars all we want. Minus 30 to maintenance costs, growth rate is plus 10%, research speed is plus 30%, and troop recruitment is plus 50%. This is better than what we have in every single way. The only thing, the only thing is other empires might not like us so much because we have, we're, we're, we're using the, the uh, way of darkness. Um, but let me, let me see if the, if the, uh, Galactopedia has any more information on that. I'm just curious. Um, let's see. Way of Darkness government was followed by an oppressive alien race that once dominated the galaxy long ago. It is a cruel, harsh form of rulership. Way of Darkness is a very well organized and efficient. It is tuned for warfare and conquest. The Way of Darkness emphasizes the might and glory of the state, increasing the strength and prestige of the state. It takes precedence over individual rights and freedoms. Way of Darkness government type is only available to empires that rediscover it through galactic exploration. The government attributes for Way of Darkness are outlined below. So that's basically it. A natural friends. Uh, okay, Way of the Ancients, that's, that's the, the light. So basically anyone with these other uh, types, 
uh, will probably be a little bit more, uh, they're gonna be leery of us, they won't like us, they're probably gonna wanna declare war on us. Uh, now I'm curious, right now we have a monarchy, so let me see what our natural friends are. See, we've got a lot more friends this way. And we've got very few, we'll say, natural rivals. So that's one thing that we do need to consider, is that we're probably gonna have a lot fewer friends if we switch over to the way of darkness. Mmm. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of benefits to this. Have revolution to switch to way of darkness. A lot of this is gonna, ah, uh, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's, let's, let's get crazy. Let's have a revolution. Okay, let me see. Changing your style of government can have serious negative effects on your empire. Development levels on your colonies will be set back and some of your colonies may even decide to leave your empire if they do not like your decision. Are you sure you want to have a revolution and change your style of government to Way of Darkness? Let's try it. Let's, let's, uh... You know what I need to do? First things first. Uh, not right now, I'm busy. Well, let's investigate these ruins. Uh, we found the data core containing the coordinates of a lost colony. The colony can be found at the planet blah 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 in the something system. We should tr hurry to this location and claim this colony for our empire. Oh, okay, cool! Right here? Uh, where is that? That is somewhere, that is somewhere cool. How do we claim it? Can we, how do we claim this for our, ourself? How, how do we claim it? Is there a way to claim it? Build a new colony ship. I can't because it's too far away. Um, so it, it wait, so it, was it already colonized? Uh, the quality's crap on it anyways. I, I, there's no rush to get that, but it's, it's interesting to, to think about anyways. Uh, but what I was going to say originally was I want to build more um, more troops back on the the blue planet and the reason I want to do that is because if there's a rebellion I need to be able to put it down right <laughs> so we're gonna build some more troops on the blue planet before I switch to the way of darkness and hopefully that will uh, you know if 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 they become unhappy I don't know why they would but if if they become unhappy then uh, maybe you know we can we can keep the planet uh, okay, and we've encountered a new empire, the Srilur Empire. I don't know where they're at because I probably don't have their their information just yet. Uh, the map is starting to fill out though. I'm starting to see where all the different factions are. I, I like playing like this. You can turn that off and just see the individual planets, but I always like having this nice visual, visual representation of everyone's influence. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and wait um, to... Uh, I'm gonna wait until I get some troops, and then I'll go ahead and, like I said, switch over to uh, the new type of government. Our engineers have completed research in accelerated construction. This breakthrough provides the ability to build resupply ships, the ability to build new planetary facility, the Bakura something something or other. All right, and our ambassador Than Bendu has acquired a new character trait, lawful. What does that mean for our uh, our ambassador? Uh, lawful means uh, we get plus 10 trade income, but we get less tourist income, and that's that's actually okay with me, uh, because uh, the trade income, you know, we get that repeatedly, but tourism income, if I recall correctly, uh, once, it, it, it basically, once the resort base fills up, you stop getting money from it. Uh, it's kind of like a one-time money boost, so that's actually probably uh, better for us uh, overall. Uh, the Srilur Empire says we have agreed to trade the rare and valuable resource Zentabia fluid with you. Okay, <laughs> man, a lot's happening all at once. There are uh, there are luxury resources, but there's also some really super rare luxury resources that have these crazy benefits for uh, your empire. Uh, well, let me see these guys here who just met us, who are angry with us. They are sell uh, they are uh, trading uh, the Zentabia fluid with us. And, actually, let's see if I can go ahead and find that in the, the Galactopedia to sh uh, show you what that does. So, Zentabia fluid is a potent healing fluid made from the rare Zentabia flower. These flowers occasionally grow in sheltered crevices on volcanic worlds. Their petals are colored in brilliant green, and they thrive in very hot environments. Zentabia fluid can heal nearly any wound or disease. It can even repair damaged limbs or organs. 
any colony supplied with Zentabia fluid thus receives a 30% development bonus over and above any other bonus. Once discovered, every effort should be made to control the trade of this highly valuable resource, and it is extremely rare. So basically, if uh, ships start uh, basically bringing this uh, resource to our planet, uh, we are going to get a uh, 30% development bonus. And the, the development bonus is basically right here. You see next to the, the music notes, we have a 105%. And this affects the value of our planet, which basically also affects, we'll say, we'll say tax and GDP and all that. So if we get another 30% on top of that, that brings us up to 135. So if we can start getting this, this fluid on, uh, you know, on our planets, that is something we really, really want. Uh, you know, even though we're maxed out, we could develop this further if we can get this fluid. So I want to be friends with these guys. I want to keep that uh, that fluid coming to us. So you know, I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, pay them off here. They're angry with us, but they're, they're they're still trading with us. Hey, you know what? That's cool. Let's go ahead and send you a gift. Uh, a medium one, six grand. Here you go. Have that, and hopefully that'll. And ensure that we are we're friendly for for uh, for years to come. We have a, a good relationship. Uh, the third defense force is almost at Urelan. I'm not sure who's going to arrive at their destination first, the strike force or the defense force. I'm pretty sure that this is going to be more interesting to watch. So we're going to focus our attention uh, over here on the strike force. All right, now I was wrong. It, it actually appears that our our defense force arrived at Urelan four before our. Um, before the strike force arrived at, um, Tika 3. So, we're gonna go ahead and destroy this mining station that the pirates set up. And, um, yeah, that's gonna be, a, that's gonna be a fun time. So, uh, we're, I'm actually gonna leave them. This, it's not gonna be really too interesting to watch because they're basically just gonna shoot at it and it's gonna blow up. Yay! For explosions! Uh, there's gonna be a lot more explosions down here and I've got a lot more of an interest seeing if, um, this colony is going to basically be, uh, brought into the fold. So let's go ahead and zoom in on Tika 3 and see if our troop transports actually make it this time. Uh, those are our, all of our cruisers and there's our troop transports. Excellent. All right, guys, begin the invasion. Valuable treasure discovered. After destroying the pirate base, we found treasure and floating in the debris. Awesome. Um, actually, I'm going to go ahead and pause the game. Oh, that was a different mining station. No, it wasn't. Was it? Why did it bring me over here? I wanted to see them destroy this thing. Uh, why? Because I want to actually set these destroyers up to uh, just patrol the planet, and that 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 will ensure that they they. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping they stay around here, and that way there they can. Actually, I'm going to tell them to move to planet because if they're patrolling, they're going to be using up energy and they're going to be uh, wasting their energy. Uh, and not being able to refuel. I want them to stay here as long as possible so that they can uh, secure the area for our our uh, colony ship. So, you guys stay at that planet, you defend it, uh, that way there are colony ships can deal with that. Uh, an independent colony discovered, that's nice, I don't really care right now. It's probably very far away and it's uh, of no interest to me. Alright. Now, let's get down to some serious um, invading. Yeah, this is going to be a lot easier than our uh, assault on Gazuria one. Uh, yeah, let's see. They've got four units, uh, total defense strength of 6,500, 7,000, 8,500, 8,500. Uh, yeah, they've basically just got small, we'll say, little wimpy militaries. Uh, let me see. How, what's uh, the troops we got here? If we look at just the, um, where's, uh, where's the, uh, the armored attack force that we're bringing... Uh, the uh, total attack strength is 37,800. Uh, is that is that right? It can't be that much higher, right? 37,800. So that works out to be about 38k. Yeah, that, that, uh, rounding up. So that works out to be about 38k. And that's actually, a, yeah, that's a lot higher than, um, than them. What about our strike troopers? 15,000. So, yeah, their, their military units are actually a lot weaker than ours. Um, whoa, we have made a highly valuable discovery at the volcanic planet Isian Prime 1. Zen, Zen, Tabia fluid. Let me go to the event location. Okay, you, you, please don't be in enemy territory. Don't be in enemy territory. <gasps> You're not in enemy territory. This is a priority. We want this. 
But it, oh, that's the Srelur Empire. Why would you show me that? I already know they have it. I can't take it now. They already claimed it. <sighs> Stupid game getting my hopes up for nothing. All right. Now back to the planetary invasion that we were so rudely interrupted from. So, uh, yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm understanding this right. So basically, their, their, their troops have a defense strength of like... 7,000, 8,500 and all that, but it looks like our troops tend to have like an attack strength uh, in excess of 10 grand per unit and that is... Oh, there we go. I forgot to get them to actually attack the planet. Yeah, so we've got two units. Uh, we look at their attack strength. Yeah, 35,000 uh, just for one uh, and now we're dropping more pods in. Yeah, this is over. This is over. Wow. Armored breakthrough, overwhelming odds, and space control. Yeah, the, the, the armored troops definitely uh, played a big difference in this fight. So we're about to get ourselves a lovely, what is that, a, um, I believe that's a marsh, no, it's a desert planet. So we're going to have this desert planet, and then we're also getting a marsh, uh, marshy planet from uh, our actual colony ship. Yes! Uh, and then we're actually expanding! All right, so let's see. Uh, those are okay. I can dis I can disregard those notices. It's basically just telling us that the uh, Gazurians are having a s cycle change. Yeah, get lost, pirates. This planet is ours. There shall be no more raids on this planet. Uh, and a new ability for our empire. Our recent conquest of the planet Tika Three has brought the Tikan race into our empire, imparting new special abilities to us. So we have industrious miners. We got faster mining by thirty percent, and natural merchants. Our colony income increases by twenty percent. Nice. And they are not going to, they're not going to get away. They're not going to get away. Um, now we notice they're slightly sad. They are at minus 2%, but we've got lots of troops there. I don't think they're going to be able to take that back. And you, you'll actually notice the, the number increasing because our guys are actually healing up. So our troops on the planet are healing up. And uh, that's good. That is good. Get lost, pirates. So we're going to go ahead and keep our fleet here in orbit above Tika 3, and we need to rename Tika 3. Um, hmm. I don't know what to name it yet. All right, so basically, uh, you'll notice here, I, we haven't seen this yet before. I don't think we have. There's these red exclamation marks next to these uh, icons for building, and that tells us that we are uh, we're experiencing a resource shortage. We don't have enough resources to go ahead and build these things. Now, like, I, I'd love to go ahead and build a large spaceport here so that we can go ahead and, you know, start um, developing this planet further, but we don't have the resources for it. I'm going to start it anyway, so, because we want, we want that spaceport here. Uh, also, you guys, destroy that destroyer. So we're going to send our ships, and we're going to try to keep our ships in system as long as possible to defend, um, defend this planet while it tries, we try to develop it. Uh, space battle debris have been dis has been discovered. So, uh, like we found, you know, that sort of uh, ship graveyard, uh, sounds like we found another one. So we're gonna go ahead to the event location just to see where it is. There's a lot of giant Kaltors here! Yeah, we're not going here without a, uh, you know, our, our, our entire strike fleet. And that's way out here. So, we definitely want to get here. We definitely want some of these ships. These are massive ships, capital ships. Yeah, th those, these are some nice ships that I would definitely like to, uh, to claim, however, uh, no, no howevers, you gotta get that, man, there's, a, there's capital ships in there! Alright, so after our strike, sh uh, our strike force has completed its job over here, we want to send it, uh, maybe down there to clear out the Kaltors, to, uh, yeah, to clear out the Kaltors so that we can go ahead and maybe claim some of those capital ships for ourselves. Um, we have a ship captain by Tika 3. Now, while our ships aren't are coming by Tika 3 to, we'll say, fill up uh, all the, uh, the, you know, the resources we have a uh, shortage of, you'll notice that the, all these pirate ships, right, the, the, uh, the so-called independent traders, they are transporting different resources, and they should uh, help this planet, we'll say, develop a little bit more. So, the, that planet there is under uh, underway. So, uh, let's see. Capital ship looming action requires refueling. Yes, I know you guys need refueling. 
I'm working on it. As a matter of fact, we can build resupply ships now. So why don't I go ahead and build, uh, let's build a couple of them. Two, two resupply ships. And as soon as those resupply ships are done, we'll go ahead and send them down there to, or at least one of them, to go ahead and start ref refueling uh, our, uh, our, uh, our ships. Our guys. Uh, now, are, has our colony ship left yet to colonize Urillon 4? Um, Force of the Blue System is colonizing here. So, Force of the Blue System, have you been constructed yet? Let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, under colony ships, Force of the Blue System, select ship, and it appears that it is still being built. It only has 10 unbuilt components though, so uh, that will be uh, finished um, constructing soon. All right, and uh, actually we now have this dotted blue line indicating that we have a, uh, we'll say a trade line. We have uh, a connection between these two uh, planets. Uh, it's, it doesn't mean too much right now because our large uh, spaceport has not been constructed yet, but you know, we'll get there. Uh, Tekken Corporation. Wait a second. Okay, I noticed, I noticed an icon here on this planet when I looked at this system. So it looks like the Tekans actually have a mining base in this system here. So, you know, we might have a little bit of conflict with the Tekans, but uh, like I said before, they like to avoid fighting. So hopefully, uh, hopefully things will not, we'll say, devolve too much between us. Now, I do want to see our reputation between us and the Asilis Major Enclave. Um, what do you mean? We, we're not dubious. Well, they're still pleased with us, so we're, we're still good. Um... Now, I have not switched over to the Way of Darkness yet, because, like, for example, we like your style of uh, government, Monarchy, plus 10. If I were to get rid of this, we actually might end up uh, at a negative with them. So, all these extra bonuses, I'm not sure yet. I need to think about it. I'll, I need to think a little bit more before I switch over to the Way of Darkness, because, um, you know, all the bonuses I get might not be worth making enemies with. Uh, let's see, what, what are our other neighbors? Uh... See, even even though the the, uh, the Boscara, I think the only reason they're they're tolerating us is because of our our, uh, our reputation and our ambassador, who's probably working his butt off to to keep us friendly with them. Uh, the Gazurians, they like our form of government as well. Uh, what about the um, what are the Naxilian Union? They like our style of government as well. Uh, so I have a feeling if we switch to the Way of Darkness, we would be bringing on a lot of war to us, and I don't want to do that right now. Uh, I, I just do not feel like we're strong enough yet. Uh, we're just starting to expand. These uh, these new colonies are very easy targets, uh, and I don't want to lose them right now. So I think I'm going to hold off on the Way of Darkness for now. Uh, I might consider it later on down the road, but for now, I just I don't think the bonuses are worth the trade-off of uh, was it damaging our reputation with the other factions. Uh, is Salt Snake on a mission right now? Yes, he's stealing research information, and he should be done, let's see, on 4505, so in about another two months. All right. Well, my time is actually up for, um, for this session, unfortunately, so, oh, more pirates. Guys, give it up. You're not gonna win. You're, you're, you're it's not gonna happen. These guys. Anyways, I am done for now. Ooh, actually, holy crap. There's there's a very large fleet here. We have a... Uh, actually, there, there's pirates right here. So we've got uh, several pirate ships. We have actually have a pirate fleet coming in. Uh, and they're probably going to try to ta uh, attack our planet. They're probably going to destroy the the large um, space station we've, we were working on. That sucks. All right. Uh, I'm not gonna go just yet. I want to see the resolution to this fight. I'm playing it in slow motion right now because I don't know. I like I like having some time to th you know look at the battlefield, plan things out, and kind of really assess things as they're happening. Besides, it kind of looks cool having everything move slow. I don't know. That's just me. I, I like I like my my game to sort of play a little bit slower than I don't know. It's cool to see lasers shooting fast, though, so maybe we'll switch over now. There. There we go. There's there's real time. There's normal speed. Oh, they're coming up a little bit from behind us as well. Destroy them all. Yeah, these pirates don't stand a chance. Focus fire. Come on, focus fire. And they are doomed. 
Take that. All right, now I gotta go. Uh, oh, come on, people. I, I, I need to do other things. Uh, let's see. Uh, the Asilis Major are planning to do something against uh, another pirate faction. I'm keeping that information to myself because uh, while I'm paying off a pirate faction, I want to see all the pirates go. So keep that information to ourselves. Okay, I'm going to pause before something else happens. <laughs> All right, uh, we're gonna go ahead and save this as LP9 because it is after the ninth episode And uh, so if you like this content would like to see more go ahead and give it a thumbs up If you didn't like it leave it a thumbs down either way Let me know what you thought in the comment section and uh, until next time I would like to ask you all to game on